Hi and welcome to Kim's Haven. My name is Rhoda. Thank you so much for joining in. Today we are diving into Proverbs chapter 19. Day 19 of this challenge. Hey, I'm so happy. Um, God has been very gracious. God has been very, very kind. I'm learning a lot of things. I'm learning wisdom, a lot of wisdom on day-to-day -day application. I hope you are learning too. Thank you for joining. Thank you for sticking with me this far. Thank you for subscribing, for sharing, for commenting. I am so honored and so grateful. And so we dive into Proverbs 19 and we are studying Proverbs for the sole purpose of gaining wisdom. And I hope you are learning as well. Leave me a comment on the comment section below and let's know um, how you're traveling, if you are learning something uh, as well, if you are gaining wisdom, if you need any um Ex expansion you know we help each other as the spirit leads us so let's go get your bible i love reading the niv get whichever version of the bible that you read and let us read together and i think because we've been reading uh, this chapter every day it's as broadly me it has brought me to the habit of just getting to read my bible as well so let's do this proverbs 19 verse 1 Better the poor whose walk is blameless than a fool whose lips are perverse. But let me tell you something. You cannot be blameless and be poor. But he's saying better be better a poor person whose ways are blameless. The Lord has a way of rewarding people who walk in um walk in righteousness because if you are blameless then that means you are walking in righteousness you are not walking in the counsel of the wicked so god has a way of rewarding um the the righteousness and we have seen so much profit of being righteous i think from uh, uh, chapter 10 onwards but he's saying that it's better it's better to be poor and be blameless than a fool whose lips are perverse Desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? What does that verse say? Say that if you have desire on something, then find knowledge on that thing that you have desire. If you have desire to grow in your career, if you have desire to have a family, if you have desire to expand in a business, you need to find knowledge. So Find out how that business works, what are the uh, current market uh, needs, you know, do your research, find knowledge about that matter that you desire in your heart. Because just desire on itself without knowledge is, is not good. So it will not profit you. It will not bring profit. It says that how much more will hasty feet miss the way? So if you have desire with no knowledge, then your feet will be hasty to make decisions. And then those decisions will lead you to a loss, you know. Verse 3, a person's own folly leads to their ruin, yet their heart rages against the Lord. Ah, Sometimes we make decisions out of, pardon me we make decision out of our own foolishness but when the, we get the results of the foolishness the decisions we made out of foolishness <laughs> we start raging against the lord it says yeah it's our own folly that led us to ruin may we have wisdom may, wa may our hearts be full of wisdom verse 4 wealth attracts many friends but even the closest friend of the poor person deserts them Poverty is not good. And I thank God that he says that he, Christ Jesus died and took our poverty and gave us his riches, both physical riches and spiritual riches. Because in heaven, it's, it's full of wealth and riches. If the Lord is build, building us mansions in heaven, then I believe, I firmly believe that he wants us to live well even on this earth even as we serve him spiritually and grow spiritually, that also our wealth materially and physically should be growing. So it says that wealth attracts many friends, uh, but the, even the closest friend of the poor deserts them. Can you imagine if you're already poor materially, means you are poor even with the people you associate with. They are not so very many. And I don't know why not many people like associating with the poor. You know, they are... They are neglected, they are, you know, deserted, um, but 
It says that even the closest, even that person that you think is your friend at the end of it all will desert you. Uh, verse 5, a false witness will not go unpunished and whoever pours out lies will not go free. Sometimes you just sit and hope that <laughs> and pray that that verse works. I don't know if you have ever been in a place that you've been accused falsely. I think I have, but the Bible is very clear. It says that a false witness will not go unpunished. So do not be a person who gives uh, witness without actually witnessing the matter. Do not go accusing people falsely, or even and this can also come in a form in form of gossip that you hear something being talked about someone, and then you pick it up and go tell other people as if you were there when that when that event happened. You know, and if you are not in an event when it was happening and somebody has come to tell you about it, do not take that information and go telling other people. You are not there. You don't know what happens. You are a false witness. You are lying and you will go, not go unpunished. Uh, it says that whoever pulls out lies, you will not go free. May lies be far from our lips. The enemy lies to us because he's the father of lies so that we too can continue carrying the lies about other people's life you know and he, he lies to us that we have the power because we can share this information because we are possessing the information but most of the time the information we possess is wrong so let us be people of truthful lives if you have seen a matter then you can speak about it but if you haven't witnessed a matter leave it you didn't see what was happening you were not there Verse number six says that many carry favor with a ruler and everyone is the friend of one who gives gifts. The poor are shunned by all their relatives. How much more do their friends avoid them? Through the poor pursue them with, though the poor pursue them with pleading, they are nowhere to be found. May poverty never be in our doors that even their own relatives, they are shunning them out. How, how, how hurtful it is when you know that you have no friend, you have no relative, just because of poverty. And sometimes poverty knocks in our doors in many ways. It might not only be physical poverty, it can be spiritual poverty. Your spirit is not having the, the wealth of the knowledge of the word of God and the presence of God. Um, and sometimes even the physical poverty can knock on our doors because of things that we cannot control because of sometimes like for example illness you can be healthy and working today and then you suffer illness or sickness that brings you down and then you do not have the wealth anymore it can be due to a death of a, a loved one who is a sole provider it can be due to poor management of the resources that you already have and so not that we know when poverty will strike or that those who are poor they chose to be poor no i do not mean that but when that poverty comes it's very sad to see that even the people that you you thought were friends or supposed to be friendly are shunning you out it says that even the relatives shun you out but I tell you what, there is one who sticks closer than a brother, and his name is Jesus. And he said that even that poverty, he takes it away and replaces it and gives you his wealth and his riches. So do not... Um, uh, do not tire to call upon his name. We have just... We read um, in the previous chapter yesterday telling us that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. I'll actually take you there. That the name of the Lord is a strong tower. That when the righteous call to it, they are safe. It's a fortified city for us to run to. So do not... Um, here. Uh, da, da, da. Do not fail to run to, to, run to the Lord even if it's poverty or sickness or, or um, something that has brought you really down to a place that the family is shunning you, the relatives are shunning you, the friends are shunning you, call upon the name of the Lord and he will come and he will save you because he is your fortified city. Hallelujah. Where is it today? Here, verse number 10, Proverbs 
18 verse number 10 it says that the name of the lord is there the name of the lord is a fortified tower the righteous run to it and they are safe run run to the name of the lord it doesn't say walk or run to the name of the lord and you know when you are in trouble you have no other choice you have to run to where your help comes from um our help comes from the lord he is the maker of them all. He's your maker. He's my maker. Run to him and you shall be safe. Hallelujah. It says verse number eight of Proverbs 19, that the one who gets wisdom loves life. The one who cherishes understanding will soon prosper. May you love wisdom. May you desire to have understanding and May you really pursue wisdom and understanding for soon, very soon, very soon, I tell you, you will prosper. Even as we finish these 31 days of, of Proverbs, very soon you will see prosperity at your door. Because I told you, and I will repeat this, that wisdom does not come alone. Wisdom comes with knowledge, comes with understanding, it comes with prudence, comes with wealth and honor and riches. Wealth comes as a package. May you unravel the package of wisdom. Verse number um, nine says that a false witness will not go unpunished, and, and whoever pours out lies will perish. It's being repeated. Verse five and verse nine is speaking about falsehood. Verse number 10, it is not fitting for a fool to live in luxury. How much worse for a slave to rule over princess. But how many fools are living in luxury and wise people living in, in lack or want? May the Lord overturn this for us in Jesus' name. A person's wisdom yields patience. It's to one's glory to overlook an offense. That if you have wisdom, then you have patience. And sometimes what patience does, it helps you to overlook a matter. And that's the, I think this statement, that's where it applies when it says that choose your battles wisely. Sometimes you have to choose which offense am I going to, you know, uh, attack or talk about and which one I am just going to overlook and it will pass by me. Um, and that brings you peace in most of the times. That at verse 12, a king's rage is like the roar of a lion, but his favor is like dew on the grass. A foolish child is a father's ruin, and a quarrelsome wife is like the constant dripping of a leaky roof. The constant dripping of a leaky roof. When it keeps dripping, even though it's just a drop, you can see on the ground, if you observe wisely, that if the water from the roof keeps dripping there every day, every day, every day, it eventually creates um, a hole. It, it creates they create distraction. It will have an impact where it keeps falling on the ground. There will be a hole on the ground. Uh, and that's how a, a, a wife who is nagging has been equated to a leaky roof. May we... For those of us who are watching and you are married, you're a wife, may the Lord help us that we will not be nagging, but our, our mouth will be full of words that are filled with grace, the words that are kind, that are able to build up our families, not only our husbands, but also our children, to build them up as they grow that will not be the one bringing destruction in our own homes. But also he says that... Um, uh, uh, a foolish child is a father's ruin. May foolishness never be found in our children. And may we um, stand in the gap for them, even in prayer, in teaching them, in instructing them that they will walk in wisdom because there's so much profit in wisdom compared to the opposite, which is foolishness. Verse 14, houses and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Houses and wealth are inherited from parents. I ask for an inheritance of these houses and wealth. <laughs> but may we also be able to give to our children the houses and the wealth. For the Bible says that we read that um, we live an in a wise a wise man lives an inheritance to their children's children. May we able to live an inheritance to our children, and may we also be able to inherit 
from our parents. But above inheritance of wealth and houses, he says that a prudent wife is from the Lord. May the Lord give you a prudent wife, those who are looking. May you find uh, someone who is prudent in the ways of the Lord and also prudent in all matters relating to your family. Verse number uh, 15. Laziness brings on deep sleep and the shiftless go hungry. I feel like this verse is attacking me. Deep sleep. I love sleep, but I told you my story about sleep. But um, it says that laziness brings on deep sleep. You know, you don't want to exert yourself. You don't want to put effort. You don't want to move and do something with your hands and so what do you do you prefer to sleep and that sleep will be sweet and will be deep but it's the bible told us that we have read this that a little folding of our hands and a little sleep and poverty will strike us uh, poverty will strike us poverty will strike at our door it's verse when we're on day six proverbs six verse number 10 says that a little sleep a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. So do not be a person who is drawn to love sleep and a folding of hands and a slack hand that we sow. Poverty will surely knock at your door. Luck will be knocking at your door. But diligent hands, they bring profit. Says verse number 16, whoever keeps commandments keeps their life, uh, but whoever shows contempt for their ways will die. Be a person who keeps commandments of the Lord. Uh, uh, Psalms 1 tells us that blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Verse 2 tells us that, but he, who delights in the ways of the Lord. That means keeping the commands of the Lord, meditating on them day and night. So if you keep the, man, the commands of the Lord, your way will be prosperous and you will live a successful life. Verse 17 says that whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he will reward them for what they have done. If you need increase, if you need God to reward you, may your hand be open to the poor. May you open up your hand to bless the poor. Verse 18 says that discipline your children for, that, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party to their, to, to their death. When I came across this verse, I decided, children will be disciplined. We know we all don't love discipline. I never loved discipline as a child. We don't love discipline even now when we are disciplined for a matter. But it says that if we do not discipline our children, then we are playing a part in their own destruction. Because the Bible says that folly is in the heart of a child. So a, a child, as they grow up, there is folly in them. There is foolishness in them. But unless you discipline them, unless you tell them this is wrong and this is right, unless you give consequences, you know, as parents, we need to just stand in the gap and do the discipline. And uh, there are different ways. I cannot say how you're going to discipline your own, but there should be a measure of discipline in your home that when you, your children knows that if I do this, surely there will be consequences, that they will not be just living a life that is not without consequences. You know, every, every organization, every government, every Kingdom has uh, rules and laws, and when you break them, there are consequences. So the same in our home, that our children should know there is discipline and there are consequences that are associated with discipline. How that discipline looks like, it's in your discretion and your family. But let there be discipline in our homes. For he says that if you discipline them, then you are saving them actually from death. But if we do not discipline them, then we are playing a part. We are just being co-partners with their cry in their crime, and that will lead to death. Verse 19 says that a hot-tempered person must pay the penalty. Rescue them and you will have to do it again. A hot-tempered person must pay the penalty. Let the hot-tempered person face their consequences. But remember yesterday we talked about, we talked about patience and self-control. And I asked 
you today. Are you a person of self-control? Do you have patience? Are you able to just sit on a matter, you know, and be a patiently approach? Or you are the one who is quick to temper? Eh? You are quick to get angry. May you receive grace to be patient and may you uh, get rid of anger and rage, the Bible tells us. But above all, may you ask this gift of the Holy Spirit to fill your heart and give you the fruit of patience and gentleness and self-control. Verse number 20, listen to advice and accept discipline. And at the end, you'll be counted among the wise. We saw it's only foolish people who do not uh, accept correction. Verse 20 here is telling us that listen to advice and accept discipline. But I also encourage you that when you are listening to that advice and accepting discipline, let it be from wise people, because then you will receive wisdom. But if you accept uh, advice and discipline from foolish people, then you will be walking in foolishness. But walk with the wise and you will be wise. Receive counsel from the wise. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevail. May the Lord's purpose prevail in our lives. When we live in the, in the Lord's purpose, many a times we live a fulfilled life. And for those who are able to find their purpose early, I encourage you to pursue it relentlessly without giving up. And may the Lord help you to pursue it. And if you are still in the pursuit of uh, seeking out your purpose, may you spend time in the presence of the Lord. May you hear what he's saying. And as he leads your steps, he will lead you to your purpose. But because we plan many things in our hearts, but unless the Lord uh, uh, purposes to prosper them, then we are planning in vain. Verse 22 says that what a person desires is unfailing love. Better to be poor than a liar. It's not that poverty is good, but if you compare poverty and lying lips, it's better that you be poor than have lying lips. But I encourage you to have none, not poverty and not lying lips. The fear of the Lord leads to life. The one rests, the, then one rests content, untouched by trouble. The fear of the Lord, the awe of the Lord, the reverence of him who is high, who is great, who is mighty, who is awesome. He is our Lord and he is our King. May we hide this fear in our heart. Verse 24, a sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He will not even bring back to his mouth. That a lazy person, that they, they put their hand to the dish, but they do not even have the strength and the energy to pick the food from the pot and put it to their mouth. Mm? May we not be lazy in Jesus' name. May we have diligent hands, hands that profit. Flog a mocker and the simple will learn prudence. Rebuke the discerning and they will gain knowledge. Whoever, whoever robs their father and drives out their mother is a child who brings shame and disgrace. I grew up in the village and sometimes it was very hard to see this verse actually being portrayed in some in some. Um, families i don't know what was going on or maybe still goes on in that particular time that children are just not caring about their parents they are ch chasing them away sometimes it's from the family land i don't know if it happens in other cultures but here verse 26 is saying that whoever robs their father and drives out their mother is a child who brings shame and disgrace May we be children who never bring shame and never bring disgrace. But sometimes the enemy knows how to come in to corrupt families that are working in unity, families that are working in peace. And the first thing he does is to bring disunity and to bring discontent and dissension. And when that comes in, then you see this, the families falling apart. But may the Lord help us. May the Lord give us grace. May the Lord really care for us that our families are not breaking apart but standing united in him in christ jesus and may we be able to fight the the vials of the enemy and may we not be the ones that the enemy is using to bring dissension and disunity and sometimes um you might find healing just from um 
from having uh, distance uh, from the uh, causes of, of, of dissension and disagreements and people who bring disunity. But that's not the will of God. But may the will of God prevail in our families. It's very challenging. And there's no answer that fits all in families. It's only the, the affected family that may know what is, they understand and they know what they are going through. But one thing I can say is that God is a great healer and God is one who works out um, the unity in our families. May we run to him. May he be our strongest tower. And if there needs to be forgiveness, may there be forgiveness, may there be repentance, and maybe they are drawing to, to unity and oneness. And may the love of God dwell in our spirit and may healing occur in our families in Jesus' name. Verse number uh, 27 says that stop listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. A corrupt witness mocks at justice and the mouth of the wicked gulps down evil. Penalties are prepared for mockers and beatings for the backs of fools. That brings us to the close of chapter 19 of the book of Proverbs. And let's pray. Father, we thank you for day 19. We have read of your word. We have heard of your instruction. We repent where we have gone wrong, my Father. And we ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your leading where we need to return. Father, we return to you that you may uh, guide us even as we gain this wisdom. May you lead our paths. May you order our steps, O oh Lord. We thank you so greatly for what we have learned. We pray that you may continue to help us to practice. As we go for the remainder of the days, my Father, may you watch over us, Holy Spirit. May you reveal your word to us. May you speak to our hearts, my Father, and may we gain wisdom. We thank you and we bless your name. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking with me until now. May the Lord bless you so greatly. I encourage you to share these um, verses and this uh, study of the book of Proverbs to your family and friends. And let's gain wisdom together. If you are watching and you haven't subscribed, I kindly request that you consider subscribing to this channel so that we can grow together like this content so that we can bring it up on the algorithm and grow this family together and that may the purpose of god be fulfilled in your lives may the lord bless you i will see you tomorrow for day 20 yeah we are getting there see you tomorrow love you bye bye